Welcome to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. You know, with the advent of the Biden administration and planning for an after-lockdown world on every politician's mind, it's not hard to see the importance of Ontario's trade relations with the United States as being critical to all of Canada. We're delighted to have Ian Todd join us. He's Ontario's representative to the United States from Washington, D.C., Ian, welcome to Boom and Bust. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me. And, and greetings from a, a hot and humid Washington, D.C. today. Well, it wouldn't be May if it wasn't hot and humid in Washington, D.C. So thanks for joining us nonetheless. Uh, I guess my first question, pretty basic one, but maybe uh, tell our audience what your objectives are for the next year. Sure. Well, just a, a little background. Uh, I'm, I'm normally uh, based out of the Canadian Embassy uh, uh, down on Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, today, I'm, I'm and have been for the last uh, several months working from home. Um, uh, uh, a lot of your viewers may not know this, but the Canadian Embassy is the it's the only embassy in the world that's located between Capitol Hill and the White House, and that speaks to our relationship and 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 the, the many decades uh, that that we've uh, traded been trading partners. Uh, Ontario has trade and investment offices also in New York, Chicago, Dallas, and San Francisco. They're, they're mainly focused on, on foreign direct investment and, and business development, whereas uh, here in Washington, I'm, I'm primarily focused on advocacy on a number of issues and, and telling the Ontario, the great Ontario story every day uh, to members of Congress and, and uh, state legislators. So, and, and to give the audience some some context uh, regarding Ontario and our and our relationship with the United States, obviously our, our supply chains and economies are, are highly uh, integrated. Uh, in, in fact, and, and I and I tell this uh, to our American friends uh, almost every day, just just to put it in context for them. If Ontario were a standalone country, we would be the third largest trading partner mm -hmm. to to the United States. So it's a massive amount of business we do. We treat it very seriously. Uh, of course, Ontario accounts for more than 40% of Canada's uh, economy and more than half of the total merchandise uh, traded between Canada and the United States is comes from Ontario. And, and so we're very proud of that. Um, uh, again, we're, we're the number one export de destination for 19 states, number two for an ad additional nine states. And of course, our, our largest training partners, uh, no surprise, Michigan, of course, uh, New York, Ohio, Texas, and California. But we do a lot of business with uh, and trade with states such as Indiana, Kentucky, Georgia, Florida, and even Washington State, uh, mm. uh, enough. Of course, uh, we have an unrivaled manufacturing capability. And, and with our extensive network, of, we've got five international airports, 80 regional airports, and 15 road, rail, and marine border crossings with the United States. And, and to our advantage, there are over 200 million consumers that live within 24 hours delivery uh, by truck or rail of our province. So that's, and, and, and of course my focus uh, to, your, to your question, uh, will I really uh, work on our key sectors uh, and the issues uh, related to them, uh, information and communications technology, agriculture and agri-food, Toronto, as you, you likely know, is, is one of the largest food and beverage clusters in North America, along with Los Angeles and Chicago. Uh, finance, uh, Toronto being the fourth largest city in North America, and a lot of Americans don't know that. Mm -hmm. I, I always get a surprise reaction when I, when, I, when I tell them Toronto's fourth largest city in North America. And I like to remind them we, we play a little uh, basketball and hockey uh, in Toronto as well. Um, but we, uh, we're the second largest financial services uh, hub in North America, and we're the sixth largest globally. Uh, so it's pretty impressive in that sector, uh, handling everything from banking, insurance, capital markets, data centers, uh, and financial app developers. Uh, we're uh, Ontario, again, a leader in, in, in uh, financial technology, fintech. Uh, mo including mobile payments, uh, cybersecurity, and, and trading analytics. And we're the second largest IT cluster in North America, next to California. Um, and along with, with those sectors, of course, manufacturing is our big one, automotive, aerospace and defense, personal protection equipment. Uh, I, I like to describe Ontario as the workshop of, of Canada to uh, our American friends uh, because of our manufacturing uh, capability. An example of that in the integration that I use almost on a daily basis is, is you look at auto parts. There are some auto parts that 
across our, our borders uh, seven to eight times before ending up in the, in the uh, final vehicle assembly plant. Right. It's really impressive. Let's, uh, let's drill down on some of this stuff. Uh, pardon the pun when it comes to critical minerals, but we are going to take a little bit of a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with Ian Todd. He is Ontario's representative to the United States. Uh, Ian, you gave a great uh, uh, tour d'horizon, if I can use that phrase, uh, on, on some of the importance about Ontario's uh, trade relations with the United States, how important it is for the entire country of Canada. Um, would love to get your, your perspective on dealing with a brand new Congress and with a new U.S. administration. How, uh, what are your challenges and what are the opportunities there? Well, on, on, uh, on Capitol Hill, I'm primarily focused with, of course, members of Congress, uh, the White House administration, uh, the offices of the U.S. Trade Representative, uh, Agriculture, Energy, and the State Department's uh, Canada Desk, um, uh, the Ways and Means Committee, the Northern Border Caucus, which is very important, obviously, Finance, Energy, Natural Resources, uh, Senate Committees. Uh, uh, and with respect to uh, uh, the new Congress and administration, you and I certainly know what it's like to to transition into a uh, new government. Right. Uh, and uh, we've, we've both experienced that. And, and it, it obviously takes a few months to get your offices staffed up, uh, briefed up on the issues, uh, uh, and add COVID uh, to that mix, which has obviously been a priority uh, to all governments. So we've just recently started to engage uh, this new Congress and, and the administration. I'm, I'm starting to have virtual calls. Uh, I've had a few in-person meetings already uh, at, this, at the state level, rather. Uh, but uh, so that that process is just starting to to re-engage. There's, uh, as you know, 72 new members uh, of Congress, nine in the Senate, and 63 in the House of Representatives. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's uh, it'll be a, a very interesting year ahead uh, as we transition uh, and, and and reopening our economies, essentially. For sure. And uh, you uh, you alluded to this uh, in your answer, but uh, clearly uh, not all the action is or should be just in in uh, District of Columbia. It's about a strategy of trade relationship with these important states that you mentioned. So tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. We, we've got very productive uh, relationships with, with governor's offices, uh, state commerce departments, uh, state economic development agencies, and state legislators. I do a lot of work at the subnational level. We, we get a great deal accomplished, uh, as you can appreciate, uh, province to state. Uh, things tend to, to move a little quicker. Um, uh, and the premier, of course, has developed great relationships with some governors. Uh, they've been, it's been very key. Uh, at, at the sub-national level, after coming down to Washington, uh, um, I discovered these uh, neighboring state agreements, state-to-state uh, -state agreements. And I thought to myself, why couldn't Ontario do the same with, with some states, uh, something similar? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to have introduced uh, and developed uh, these uh, agreements, which we have called strategic investment procurement agreements. Of course, in, in government, we like acronyms, so otherwise known as SIPAs. Um, they're not uh, MOUs, memorandums of understanding, which, which in my view tend to be, uh, um, uh, respectfully tend to be, they take a lot of work and energy, but MOUs tend to, to, to be nothing more than a photo op and a news release in most cases. Mm -hmm. uh, but, so these agreements actually have, have teeth. They uh, uh, the first one signed between a Canadian province uh, and a U.S. state was between Ontario and Maryland, and we we uh, completed that agreement last December right. at a great little signing ceremony with the Premier and, and Governor Hogan. So, and now there's several other agreements with states uh, between us and, and various states underway. So that's that's been a very productive uh, uh, relationship at the subnational level. And uh, people don't realize this, uh, um, but uh, Ontario was going to host the uh, American states in Toronto for one of their governor's meetings. And of course, COVID happened. Uh, but that, that tells you how important Ontario can be and can be definitely in the limelight. Is that not correct? That's correct. We were, we were scheduled to host the National Governors Association uh, uh, last year in, in April, in fact. 
and, and Governor Hogan was chair of the National Governors Association at the time. And, and his, his focus was infrastructure. So again, Ontario has got a, a great story to tell on infrastructure. We, we've developed that expertise, uh, and particularly with on, on P3 projects uh, and something that is still, uh, interestingly enough, quite novel here in the United States. We're going to continue our discussion with Ian Todd. He is Ontario's representative to the United States, uh, coming to us from Washington, D.C., talking uh, all things trade, uh, important for Ontario, important for the rest of Canada as well. Please stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages. And we're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with Ian Todd. He is Ontario's representative to the United States. Ian, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Line 5 pipeline uh, controversy. It's something that uh, this show, Boom and Bust, has been uh, focused on. I've had several uh, shows on it already, including a guest appearance by the Upper Peninsula member of Congress uh, who... Uh, was not happy with uh, the Michigan governor's position on this. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Line 5 from your perspective, maybe what Ontario has been doing uh, to, to deal with this situation. Sure, this is, a, this is an issue that I've been working on for a couple of years now and closely with my Alberta counterpart and my federal colleagues in the embassy, uh, both here in Washington and, and Ottawa. Uh, but, but just quickly, before Line 5, I, I, I would just like to touch on Line 3. Uh, which is another interesting, very uh, interesting uh, uh, pipeline project that we're keeping a very close eye on. As you know, it's, it's an 1,100 kilometer pipeline originating in Alberta, and it carries light, medium and heavy crude oil to, uh, uh, to the United States. It, it crosses uh, the border in uh, Manitoba, North Dakota, and, and runs through Minnesota and ends in Superior, Wisconsin. But Line 3 is very, very important, a very important piece of infrastructure, which will obviously generate thousands of full-time jobs uh, during construction. It's essentially replacing a 50-year-old pipeline with a safer one. So we're watching line three very carefully. On line five, which is the one that's been in the news uh, most recently, particularly the last, last few months, but again, something we've been working on for many, many months. Uh, as you know, Enbridge is currently in, in court order mediation uh, with the state of Michigan. Um, and as a little background for those that don't know, this is this is uh, a pipeline that for more than 65 years has delivered light oil and natural gas liquids uh, and to heat homes and businesses, uh, fuel vehicles and power industry uh, to the tune of 540,000 uh, barrels a day. It's uh, just over a thousand kilometers uh, that originates in Superior, Wisconsin, where line three ends and it ends up in Sarnia. It supplies 55% of Michigan's propane needs uh, and feeds major refineries in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Ontario, and Quebec. And shutting down this, this pipeline, as, as Governor uh, Whitmer has proposed to do, would uh, have a huge impact on jet fuel supply to both Detroit and, and uh, Toronto's International Airport. And as you know, Pearson Airport is the second busiest airport in North America, so that would be uh, that would, that would have a significant impact. Uh, I've met with the governor uh, twice on this issue. Uh, the premier's first bilateral uh, with a U.S. governor was with Governor Whitmer uh, almost two years ago. And uh, at the time, she'd only been in office a few weeks. So it's, it's, again, something, and the premier's had several discussions with Governor Whitmer since then. So something that we've been very active on. Um, I guess uh, it's not only Line 5. Uh, it goes with the territory that uh, there are uh, trade frictions uh, that Im impact on Ontario. Uh, tell us a little bit about your work in those areas. Well, uh, again, and if I could go back to line five, just to, to, to use the, the example uh, uh, in terms of, of frictions, um, my, my key message to, to uh, our American friends over the last several months with respect to this project is that for over 150 years, Ontario and Michigan have been been best of friends. Uh, uh, we're sports rivals. Uh, we're great neighbors. Uh, you look at the Windsor-Detroit Bridge. Uh, our highly integrated supply chains. We share. We're shared stewards of the Great Lakes. 
um, uh, and and in times of need, uh, neighbors help each other, and and that's really been my key message. And 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 with respect to the friction here on this issue, uh, when Michigan needed wolves, uh, Ontario came forward, and that's a great story in itself. Right. And uh, that's what neighbors do. Um, but so hopefully, with this uh, negotiated settlement on Line Five, one that protects the Great Lakes and uh, you know, for many generations and, and allows uh, Michigan and Ontario to continue thriving. And right now, there, there's, uh, Canada is very unified on a negotiated settlement. So that's just, uh, that's in, in terms of other, other friction points, uh, uh, most recent uh, issue that we're dealing with is on deforestation. Right. California have introduced bills and Canada has been captured in that. Uh, in that legislation, and so we're doing a lot of work with state legislators uh, and and uh, at the federal level to to remind Americans that uh, uh, Canada has a world class reputation when it comes to forestry, um, and we shouldn't be lumped in with with the with, with countries like Brazil or Indonesia, China, and Russia. We're going to have to take another brief break, but we'll be right back after these messages. And we're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with Ian Todd. He is Ontario's representative to the United States in Washington, D.C. Uh, Ian, I'd love to get a window on just, uh, you've mentioned Premier Ford uh, several times in this uh, interview. Uh, just how engaged is Premier Ford uh, been on these trade opportunities? Give us a bit of a window on how he engages and, and who he talks to and what he does. I think that would be very interesting for our, our viewers. Well, I, uh, I think I think your viewers know uh, Premier Ford, Doug Ford. He's 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 uh, I, I, he's a salesman. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. He understands business. He's he had a business uh, operating in in the Chicago area for many years. Uh, he understands the country, and, and uh, uh, it's 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 been a, an honor and a privilege to to be a part of the team and 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 sit down with him and across the table from governors and other elected representatives down here because I've never seen anyone uh, promote Ontario like Premier Ford does. He's got a, a real gift for that and developing a, a, a connection with with uh, with these uh, with these governors and and uh, officials here in Washington. Um, he's got several good relationships. I mentioned Governor Whitmer. Uh, uh, it was his first meeting uh, with a U.S. governor, and and uh, that that was it. That's that's a, that meeting. That first meeting is a story in itself. But uh, he's also got good relationships with uh, Governor uh, Pritzker of I Illinois, uh, uh, Governor Evers of Wisconsin, and uh, Governor Walz of Minnesota. Uh, of course, we've been participated in the National Governors Association meeting for the last couple of years, uh, which has been 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 very very productive. Uh, he uh, he participates in the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Governor Premier's uh, organization and, and on the Great Lakes. This is uh, for for six decades we've worked together uh, as joint stewards of this this uh, the world's largest freshwater system and, and, and the Premier treats that uh, uh, with a high priority. So he he has uh, he has over the last few years managed to to uh, build some 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 strong relationships with his his uh, state counterparts. Indeed. And I guess this leads to the ultimate question. Uh, all of these relationships, all of the work that you're doing in Washington, uh, someday, hopefully someday soon, we're going to be opening up the borders again. So give us a little bit of a peek on the strategy uh, when the border does open, when it comes to trade relations and economic activity. Well, we're looking forward to that, that day, of course. Uh, um, it, it's... Uh, uh, fortunately, our, our supply chains have remained intact. In uh, they uh, they continue to be strong. Uh, uh, the goods and merchandise uh, have uh, continued to flow. Um, but when the border does open, we will be reminding Americans Ontario is open for business. Uh, uh, we'll be focusing on kickstarting those border communities that that were so devastated. Uh, uh, particularly when it comes to travel and, and tourism, uh, those those local businesses uh, that uh, will be recovering, and I, I expect we'll see the premier down here uh, 
uh, engaging with his counterparts, and, and uh, I would imagine several ministers, uh, Minister Fideli uh, on economic uh, development and trade, uh, the Minister of Finance will be down, Minister of Agriculture, lots of work uh, for them to do, and look forward to that. Uh, and, and hopefully on day one, when the border opens, I hope to have the Premier and, and Minister Fideli uh, uh, do something uh, at the border, perhaps we'll pick Buffalo, uh, and look forward to that. I don't have any wood here, but I'll knock on glass, and uh, hopefully that uh, day comes soon enough. We just have about 20 seconds left. Business impressions of Ontario. What do, what do you hear from Americans? We've, we've got a, you know, Ontario's got a great story. Uh, we're, we're, it's a compelling story with, with our science, technology, engineering, and math grads, uh, the best banking system in the world, quality of life, healthcare, education, affordability. Uh, it's, it's, it's an attractive place to do business and, and Americans recognize that. It's just have to tell that story. Exactly right. Ian Todd, it's been a pleasure having you on our program. Hopefully we can have you back at some point. But in the meantime, keep up the work and uh, thanks for being on the program. Thank you, Tony. So as you can see, these kind of trade relationships, Ontario with uh, the, the United States, the individual states and the national government, these don't just sort of happen organically. There's a lot of work put into it, including by Ian Todd, Ontario's representative to the U.S. in Washington, D.C. We've had other guests on our program as well. Vic Fideli, as an example, our trade minister who works on this file very, very well as well. Keep watching our program. It's great to have you aboard.